Welcome back, my friends, to this show that never ends. I hear Marty. Marty may interrupt me in this video, guys. He may be ringing the bell. He may want to go out. But that's okay, because we're going to watch an SPG gameplay, so I could just leave. And it wouldn't make any freaking difference. Johnny. From the B-Tech clan. Shout out to you guys. Johnny come lately There's a new kid in town Everybody loves him But you're still around Okay uh, <clears throat> Slow start to today's video I realize that, I realize it um, He's gonna shit on, all, on everyone okay? It's SPG day so we get to watch stuff like this. Watch, guys. Watch, watch. So let's shoot. Uh, let's shoot both of them. Get together, guys. This is why you should always parallel park. <laughs> In an obvious first position. That's what you should do when you play this game. When you're playing a medium tank or a heavy tank, you should always try and get really close to your teammate. Parallel park in the open. Especially after about 40 seconds when the game starts. When there's two SPGs per side. That's a good strategy. Whoa, did you see that? Everything's against SPGs these days. There's tracers, there's all sorts of... Uh, that was close. Nerfies, nerfy things. There's all sorts of nerfiness. Yet some people still manage to have fantastic battles. And we're going to witness one. This uh, class of tank that uh, has, just gets to ignore the view range circles on the map, right? He can get an aerial mode and look right to the other side of the map. Look at that. He can see the tracers of his uh, enemy counterparts. But he chooses not to shoot them. He chooses to shit all over 112 who carefully backs up. <laughs> He's the poor 112. He's been hit numerous times. And now he's lost all his HP and he's stunned for over 20 seconds. <laughs> View range circles, guys. Uh, uh, the, uh, the white line on the minimap, you see that? The white line is the farthest that a normal tank can detect someone. <sighs> I was thinking about that the other day. It's the, like the, uh, the analogy that... Um, how you try and convince flat earthers that the earth isn't flat, right? You, uh, uh, you say, well, if you're a ship in the Pacific Ocean and um, you, there's these big battleships, they have uh, the, the really high, what is it called? The, where, the cap, where the captain sits up on the, the superstructure, right? Why do those battleships have the really high uh, thing? They don't need it now because they have radar, but in, in the, the old days when they built them, they had the big high part in the middle and some guy would stand up there like this. You know why? Because the surface of the earth is curved, right? So the higher up they could get, the farther they could see before you know, their, their view, eventually the earth would curve and they would be able to see over the, the edge of the curvature, right? If, if they made a battleship that had like a hundred foot uh, superstructure, they, they would be, they could see farther, right? I think what was the farthest view range of a, of a ship back in the day before, uh, before radar was something like uh, 14, 15 miles, something like that, some, something like that, uh, for, on average. And then anything that was, Let's just pick a number. 15 miles is about... And anything past 15 miles, they couldn't see. That was their event horizon. That was their maximum uh, detection range. Right? Uh, 15 miles. Because of the curvature of the Earth's surface. That's kind of a two-dimensional problem. And it's uh, interesting because you hear... Uh, uh, astronomers talk about uh, the same thing only in three dimensions with um, with us on Earth. Because right? if you go outside at night and you do this, you can see 
a certain distance. And, uh, on, on Earth, when you're trying to see a ship, on top of the ship, you can only see 15 miles. But if you go like this outside at night, you can see billions of light years away. I don't think you can see the 14, but I think you need a telescope to see right to the edge of the limit of what we can see. I think you need one of those high-powered telescopes. And the farthest humans can see uh, right now is about 14 uh, billion uh, light years. And that's because it, like, if, if you believe that the universe is 14 billion years old, so it's been around for 14 billion years, so uh, if we look as far as possible, the light that was generated right at the beginning when it all started uh, has been traveling for 14 billion years, the life of the universe. And so the, if the farthest we can see is the light that was generated right at inception, which if it traveled, at, if you believe that speed of light is the, the constant uh, maximum speed, this is the, the way physics works, this, these are the laws that we believe in, then the farthest you could see is 14 billion light years uh, away. A, a light that travels at, I don't know, a couple, 300,000 mi miles per second? It's pretty fast. <laughs> if light travels for 14 billion years, uh, that's how far the maximum we can see right now. That's our uh, maximum detection range right now. But you think of this. This is kind of uh, interesting. If if a billion years from now, if we, right now we can look back 14 billion years by looking up at the sky with a powerful telescope, consider this. Let's say uh, 1 billion years from now, if World of Tanks still exists a billion years from now, and uh, there's another uh, content creator that's just as... Uh, uh, wait a minute, we got to see this. What's happening here? Is this game going to be over? Target acquired. Get the hell out of here. You're interrupting my video. What's wrong with you? Consider a billion years from now, and there's an entertaining content creator that people will watch that's making World of Tanks videos, and he postulates the same question. One billion years from now, if humans exist and they look up at the sky like that, how far back will they be able to see? Right now, if we go like this, we can, with a, with a telescope, we can see 14 billion light years ago. A billion years from now, if we do this, did I say a million or a billion? A billion years from now, if we conduct the same thought experiment, we'll be able to see 15 billion light years away. Huh? 14 billion years from now, if humans are still around and we look up at the sky, we'll be able to see 28 billion light years ago. Isn't that weird? And some people are scratching their heads going, well, that's weird. There is an inconsistency, though. There is an inconsistency. It does, uh, uh, it does not, it is not consistent with the, uh, the concept that the uh, universe was created W with a big bang and was originally uh, formed from a singularity through a process which they call the big bang to be what uh, what, what exists now the, the whole it's not consistent consistent with the um, with the belief that the uh, uh, universe started in a singularity because if it started in a singularity if it started in one spot and it started expanding, at the speed of light, for now 14 billion years, that wouldn't make sense because if we're somewhere out here, if you look towards the center of the universe, you'd be able to see things, but if you look the other way, what would you see? But it's, it doesn't make sense. Uh, the Earth couldn't have, it, it didn't, it didn't form from a point. It, uh, it's, a, it's, it's, it's confusing. It was all there, even though there was nothing there, is how you have to believe it. The universe had to exist everywhere 
not in a point, even though it didn't exist. And even though it exists everywhere and it is infinite, somehow it's expanding. And those of you who are wa watching from you, New York and you're confused, just don't worry about it. You live in Brooklyn. Brooklyn's not expanding. <laughs> Have I confused you totally? I'm confused. I'm confused. But think about that. Because it's this... Um, let's just watch him take out... Oh, he didn't take him out. Well, that's the fun way to watch an SPG game. Isn't it, guys? Yeah. He aced the... Uh, Conquer gun carriage. He did 6,153 damage and he made 143,000 credits. Let me pose another thought experiment for you guys, which is fairly interesting, okay? Because this is related to World of Tanks, guys. This is a World of Tanks channel. Okay? So for every tank in World of Tanks, there is a maximum detection range. So for this tank, the maximum detection range is the white circle. A tank in another position on the map will have the same maximum detection range but that circle will be in a different position on the map. Some of the circles will intersect. We agree on that. Now, if you're a ship at sea without radar, and you have a, you know, your superstructure is 50 feet off the surface of the water, let's just assume you can see 15 miles. If that's your maximum detection range because of the curvature of the earth, and as a ship that drops below the horizon because the, the, the surface of the water in the Pacific Ocean you won't see that. So 15 miles is your maximum detection circle if you're a ship uh, on the Pacific Ocean. But that doesn't mean that's the full extent of the Pacific Ocean because there could be another ship a thousand miles away from you and its maximum detection range is 15. <laughs> and the maximum detection range for the Manticore is zero. You could have many, many, many thousands of ships in the Pacific Ocean, that can only see 15 miles, a circle, a radius of 15 miles around their ship, there's a thousand ships in the Pacific Ocean, and they never see each other. Okay, that's a, both of these are two-dimensional. Now let's talk about the universe. So we're here, we can look up, and let's say you know we have perfect eyesight, and the universe is 14 billion years old, so the distance that light can travel in 14 billion years that's how far we can see we can see a sphere it's a three-dimensional now a sphere of radius 14 billion years light years of distance that's a, a measurement of distance 14 billion light years the, the 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 distance light travels in 14 billion years that's our maximum detection range but that's not the edge of the universe, right? That's our maximum detection range. What about another planet that's uh, 10 billion light years away from us? There's other humans that live there or other life forms that live there that have uh, built telescopes. They look up at the, at the sky. They can see 14 billion years away. Their maximum detection range is 14 billion light years. Maybe there's a thousand different light forms scattered around the universe and each one can see a maximum of 14 billion light years. That's their maximum detection range scattered around the universe. But the universe is so big that we're unaware of each other's existence. Just like the ships that pass in the Pacific Ocean. It's the same thing. Now, if you're a ship in the Pacific Ocean, and you can consider thousands of ships, eventually there's going to be one ship that uh, sails pretty close to land. And he'll, in his maximum detection range, he'll uh, see a, there's a mountain there and it's discover Hawaii. Because the Pacific Ocean has limits. You see the edge. These, this, eventually a ship will see the edge. They'll see land because the Pacific Ocean is finite. The universe is infinite. If the universe is infinite, that means there can be infinitely, an infinite amount of observers anywhere in the universe that can look up and see a maximum of 14 billion light years in a sphere 
not exactly a sphere because gravity and space-time, it's not going to be that shape. But on a first-order approximation, there could be an infinite amount of observers that can see that far and never see each other. Does your brain hurt? And if, if you contemplate that thought experiment, then think about this then. Understanding what we just said and, and that analogy, if that's true, how's the universe expanding? What do you mean it's expanding? Is it expanding or are things just moving? If it's expanding, how come no one can see the edge? Think about that. It's the uh, the the leading edge forefront of uh, physics that um, that makes no sense. That uh, you can you can argue around and around and around, contemplate around and around and around and around and around and around we go, round round we go, round round we go. Leave some comments. Let me know. Uh, you know, if uh, if your brain hurts, uh, just remember: if you live in Brooklyn, Brooklyn's not expanding. <laughs> it doesn't. It doesn't change any. We don't give a shit. It's it's meaningless to us. It does doesn't matter. <laughs> it doesn't matter how far we can see. It's this is just a thought experiment. Right? Is it true? Does it make sense? Um, who knows? Who knows? Anyone who speaks about this stuff with assertion, believing that they are correct, uh, and tries to like uh, educate you, you know, this is the truth. You don't you understand this? They're morons, right? Even a lot of these uh, uh, super uh, expert scientists that try and uh, uh, pompously explain because you know they've they've memorized some equations. <laughs> And they're trying to explain it to you like as if they know. And don't you know that it's just the it's the dark matter like, that they're trying to explain to the, the arrogant uh, uh, pricks that try to explain it as if they're much smarter than you. They're morons, right? Because really, um, they don't know either. <laughs> <laughs> there's interesting. Um, uh, there, there's interesting thought puzzles that we can uh, postulate and uh, we try and we try and figure them out by the uh, information and the stuff we observe uh, but by looking up at the sky and by observe I don't mean just us uh, you know I say look up but uh, you know humans we can only see uh, a, a tiny little portion of the bandwidth of uh, of photons right we can, we, we can only see uh, violet blue green yellow orange red but there's stuff on this side and there's stuff on that side right there's that's why we have radio wave telescopes and we, we when we look up we uh we try and observe the universe with um, um instruments that can see a broader band than the human eye can see because here we're basically we're blind right we're, we're helpless pathetic little animals like in, in every way uh, our senses are uh, worse than uh, other things here on Earth, They're like uh, like uh, smell. Uh, when we have, we say, "Oh, the, those onions smell good while they're sautéing." But uh, if we want to detect uh, whether someone's trying to smuggle cocaine across the border and you need to really smell, have something that smells better than we do, we we get a dog. A dog has a much better sense of smell than we do, right? Uh, an eagle has much better eyesight. Uh, than we do. An, an eagle can can see much better than we can. Uh, you know, a taste. Uh, we, we, don't, we can taste things, uh, but there's uh, animals that, I don't know which one, that can has a much better sense of... We have the worst senses of... There's hundreds of examples of animals that have better senses than we do. But uh, we created machines that can... Um, that can uh, uh, sense things far beyond our capabilities, like a radio telescope, uh, X-ray uh, machine, like all these things, right? That's why we're so smart. 
We're so smart, but we don't know whether the universe is expanding or not. Why am I talking to you about this stuff? <laughs> because I was... I started making the video and I thought, uh, you know, it's time that we uh, do a uh, an SPG showcase because, uh, you know, SPG players are people too. Uh, you know, like flat earthers are people too. They're stupid, but they're still people. <laughs> Can you imagine believing the earth is flat? Jesus Christ. Like I've traveled around it, right? I'm just a regular schmo, but I have traveled. I have gone to there and there and there in Australia. And I come back, right? Imagine being, <laughs> imagine being so stupid that you actually believe the Earth is flat. <laughs> My eggs are square. <laughs> well, no, they're not. They're round. Look, they're on your plate. No, they're square. In the, in the modified universe that space-time that they existed the egg yolk is a square in warped space which is uh, almost true you know you can make that analogy because I mean the earth is traveling in a straight line in the space that's deformed by the gravity of the celestial bodies that are around us mainly the Sun we're traveling straight in that portion of space-time which the Sun has warped. If the Sun wasn't there we just we would be going straight in a different space-time. What's more exciting? Listening to me uh, uh, ramble about uh, uh, th this kind of gibberish or, or the SPG gameplay. <laughs> Come on, what, what's more thought provoking? <laughs> this shot here, is it going to hit? Let's watch. It's, it's traveling in the, the shot. That shot that he took, that shell trajectory, traveled in a, sp in a straight line in the, in the space time created by Wargaming's programming. <laughs> the game, the game calculated that trajectory based on the physics, the laws of nature that were input in Wargaming's patented uh, computer program, which is this game. <laughs> sometimes you miss, sometimes you hit, it's balanced. This game is like the universe, right? Only this one's controlled by some Russians. <laughs> <laughs> ah, life is a beautiful thing. If we didn't have our brains, what we'd, we would be helpless, pathetic animals, right? Thank God we have our brains so we can amuse ourselves. Imagine if we didn't. If we didn't have our brains, we'd be extinct, right? Wouldn't we? We probably, if we didn't have the brains we have, we would be extinct. And uh, funny enough, because we have the brains we have, we will probably be extinct eventually <laughs> so you can't win in other words like whether you watch my video or not uh, is irrelevant you're probably gonna lose brain cells okay like whether you just play this game or you watch my video you will probably lose brain cells <laughs> I'm just wondering I'm wondering how many of you are still watching. Put your hands up if you're still watching. How many of you stopped watching the video? That is a conundrum, though, because if you stopped watching the video, you um, you would not be here to uh, answer the question. So uh, fill the comment sections, please, with, yes, I'm still watching. We love your videos. Fill To make me feel good, then I'll read all the comments, and I'll go, look, everyone says that they're still watching the video. So obviously... Um, Obviously, everyone watches my videos. That's science, right? That's uh, there you go. That's that's how we do science these days. I saw a TikTok video, and there was a guy dancing, and uh, he said uh, the election was rigged. So therefore, <laughs> it all comes down to 
just one simple thing. You have to just choose in life what, uh, what is meaningful for you and, um, and enjoy it because uh, we're here for a good time, not a long time, right? Speaking of which, he only has one shell left. Just one. He has one shell left. And it's near the end of the end. There was one enemy left on low HP. And that enemy is going to come and try and win the game, isn't he? Now, remember the detection range thing? His detection range is smaller than the enemy tank destroyer. And also, he's placed himself behind a house, which is not so smart. <laughs> and the question is, will he win this game? That's the question. Will he win this game? Is he going to take a blind shot? Is he aiming in the correct orientation? Is he going to take a shot? Is he going to waste his shot and shoot into the corner? Uh, or is he... And the correct answer is no. He's not going to win this game. It's going to be a draw. He's going to do 6,994 damage and get a draw. Why? Because World of Tanks is not as fascinating as the universe, right? Uh, my commentary, uh, I believe that my commentary was more entertaining uh, than the, um, than Dr. Nick's. I'm sorry. <laughs> Leave it in the comment section, guys. What's more entertaining? A small, uh, 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 leave it in the comments, guys. Let me know what's more entertaining. World of Tanks or the universe? That's the question for you today.